Department. May I now respectfully invite the President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Dr. William Ruto, for his remarks, please. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, my dear brother, President Nana Akufuado, I take this opportunity to express my great appreciation for extending your invitation for me to undertake this estate visit to Ghana. Let me also thank you most sincerely for the warm reception accorded to me and my delegation in this beautiful city of Accra and this great nation. Ghana and Kenya have strong and historic ties back to pre-independence period when our founding fathers fought for freedom against colonial rule so that our two nations could determine their own destiny. As I told you earlier, Mr. President, Ghana's independence was a great inspiration to many countries, including Kenya. And it is the reason why our founding fathers had common focus on liberating our two countries and giving the chance to our people to determine their destiny. Before this third visit, our respective delegations have discussed the elevation of our dedicated mechanism for the conduct of our bilateral relations from a joint commission for cooperation to a binational commission. Mr. President, that will give Kenya and Ghana an opportunity to elevate our interaction, our collaboration, and to expand the scope of what we can do together as nations and as our two peoples. During my discussions with President Nana Kupado, we have noted this development as a significant milestone in the evolution of our diplomatic ties. We stand on a warm and cordial, dynamic, and impactful historic collaboration. We've also agreed that the inaugural session of the Binational Commission will provide us with an opportunity to reaffirm our friendship, deepen our bilateral ties, and strengthen the noble cause of African economic integration as exposed by our Africa Union Agenda 2063. Kenya and Ghana have enjoyed long-standing cordial relations since the 60s. This was preceded by pre-independent solidarity between our two leaders who were among the conveners of Pan-African conferences. The historic bonds of friendship between our two countries run deep. We are bound together by our shared commitment to Pan-African unity and a common vision for a united and prosperous Africa. It is appropriate that our two nations which have long played strong roles in fostering Pan-African unity, also make similar contribution to the development of Pan-African trade integration. It is also imperative that we continue to strengthen our relations, enhance our solidarity, expand cooperation and deepen mutual understanding to unite and deliver inclusive economic growth for the peoples of our nations, and for our continent. The Pan-African independent movement inspired many African countries that followed in Ghana's independence. Once again, in its capacity as the home of African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat, Ghana is, leading, is a leading force in economic integration and development of 55 countries within eight regions economic communities in our continent. I thank you, Mr. President, for spearheading this development, for your support to the SCFDA Secretariat, and for your support to the Secretary General, and for Ghana's hosting of the Secretariat on behalf of our continent. Your Excellency, still on the subject of integration, and especially in accelerating the free movement of people within our continent, 
I welcome your recent announcement of your commitment to remove entry visa requirement for all Africans by December this year. This commitment aligns with one of the goals of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area to create a single market in the continent to drive economic growth, grow and create more jobs, and eradicate poverty. I have informed President Akufuado that in similar vein, Kenya recently removed visa requirements for visitors from all countries with effect from January 1st this year. This underscores Kenya's commitment to complement Ghana in improving free movement, increasing trade, and building a stronger, more united continent. The free movement of people between our two countries has contributed immensely to trade, investment, and tourism. In this respect, His Excellency and I noted that trade between Kenya and Ghana is growing. In 2002, for example, in 2022, for example, Kenya's imports to Ghana were valued at 10.4 million US dollars, and imports were valued at 4.8 million. US dollars. We have agreed that there remains great potential to enhance trade between our two countries, especially in the numerous opportunities arising from the establishment of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. President Akufuado and I are encouraged that under the ACFTA, our two countries have taken bold measures to explore these opportunities. We recall that in October 2022, I flagged up from Nairobi the first consignment of Kenyan tea destined for Ghana. On 23rd September 2023, Kenyan made chloride exide batteries worth about 9.3 Kenyan shillings landed in the Ghanaian port of Tema. While Little Cup, a taxi hailing service from Kenya, is now also operational in Ghana. My brother and I noted that Ghana Export Promotion Authority facilitated Ghanaian business people to undertake a market entry expedition to Kenya between May 23rd and 27th last year, and consequently, the Ghana Trade House was launched in Nairobi. Undeniably, this initiative represents a giant step towards greater trade within and among various regions and countries throughout our, our continent, spearheaded by Ghana and Kenya. I congratulate you, Mr. President, for being appointed the champion for Africa Union for the establishment of the Africa Union financial institutions. This include the Africa Central Bank, the Africa International Monetary Fund, the Africa Investment Bank, and the Pan-African Stock, Stock Exchange. My brother and I discussed at great length on how these institutions, championed by His Excellency the President, and in fact when he spoke at the Africa Union in February, I endorsed wholeheartedly the building of these institutions as a mechanism of consolidating our own economic and financial situation in our continent. And I concur with His Excellency the President that we should, as African countries, invest in these institutions. And Kenya, last year, invested $40 million in Africa's in bank. We are considering investing in Trade and Development Bank, we are considering investment, investing in all the other institutions as a way of putting a stamp of approval of these institutions and building their capacity to assist us develop our own financial institutions and leverage on them to um, acquire the much needed concessional financing to finance our own development. Your Excellency, as I have told you, you have my absolute support on this subject. And as we work collaboratively and collectively as African leaders 
to consolidate the place of the Africa Union and rationalize its institutions and reform its institutions, a mandate that was assigned to me by my colleagues. What the President is championing is going to be part of the consolidation of the reform, of the enhancement of institutions that will support the progress and prosperity of our continent. I have informed uh, Mr. President that I'm looking forward to him working with me and all the other leaders to make sure that we have an Africa Union as an institution that is fit for purpose to drive the prosperity of our continent. My brother President, the establishment of this financial institution has always been at the center of the African integration agenda. The Abuja Treatment Treaty of 1991, Article 19 of the African Constitutive Act of 2000, provide for the creation of these financial institutions and is part of the AU Agenda 2063. Excellency, I wish to express utmost appreciation to the organizers of what we have today and what we will have later in the business forum and we will have an opportunity to address our business people, guide them and provide them with the latitude for them to interact with our officials so that we can facilitate greater investment, more trade and enhance our collaboration in a much meaningful way. During our meeting, we have noted that peace and security is fragile, not only in Africa, but across the globe. Internal strife, conflict, and wars, compounded by terrorism and violent extremism, are a major obstacle to peace, security, and stability. Statistics show that the number of people killed and forcibly displaced by crisis in Africa has been increasing over time. As of 2023, over 37 million people have been forcibly displaced in Africa, and six countries account for 64% of forced displacement. Kenya appreciates and commends efforts by Ghana through the Accra Initiative and ECOWAS towards the fight, the fight against terrorism and in addressing resurgence of the unconstitutional changes of government in the Sahel and West African region. As a nation, Kenya looks forward to receiving continued support from Ghana in addressing terrorism and other threats so as to guarantee peace and security in Africa, in our region, and globally as well. I inform His Excellency the President that Kenya has been engaging in supporting peace initiatives in the Horn of Africa and the Great Lakes region, including DRC, South Sudan, Sudan, and Somalia. Kenya stands in support of all efforts, both in West and in our region, aimed towards fostering peace and security in our continent. It has become clear during our conversation that we have to redouble our efforts to silence the guns in Africa as a vital condition for the establishment of economic growth. We also have no choice but to endow the Africa Union our regional, and our regional economic communities with greater capacity to do more in problem that is escalating out of control and requires urgent global action. However, we noted that Africa continues to endure the most of this crisis. The first ever Africa Climate Summit held in Nairobi September last year served as a platform for the African leadership to define and project a clear common position in the global climate action discourse in the run-up to COP28 and beyond. Subsequently, the Nairobi Declaration at the Africa Climate Summit and COP28 laid ground for swift, just an equitable transition underpinned by 
drastic reduction in emissions and significantly enhancing climate financing. In this forum, as you all remember, we crafted a new narrative for our continent because it became necessary that we reorient and we draw a narrative that puts Africa in proper perspective, that it is possible for Africa to provide solutions rather than just being part of the problem. And for a long time, Africa has been defined and profiled as a continent of trouble, conflict, war, disease, and poverty. But we believe that that's not half the story. Correct narrative is that Africa is a continent of opportunity. And significantly changing the narrative is our assignment. Excellency, I take this opportunity to thank you for the support we have received during the summit in Nairobi and beyond. Your attendance underscored the unity of African leadership in formulating interventions and other commitments aimed at mitigating the rising impact of climate change by implementing homegrown solutions for the prevention, mitigation, and recovery and respect to disasters arising from climate change. Your Excellency, you remember we also discussed and agreed that reforms are needed to give Africa a fit for purpose institution for the effective implementation of Agenda 2063, and we have agreed on common positions of how we are going to take this going into the future. Finally, on 15th March this year, the African Union Executive Council unanimously decided that candidates for the position of the next chairperson of the Africa, Commission, Africa Union Commission would be nominated by the Eastern African region states in accordance with the statutes of the AU Commission, the rules of procedure, and the Africa Union policy organs and decisions of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government. Your Excellency, my dear brother, I thank you most sincerely for accepting to support Kenya's candidature for the position of the chairperson of the Africa Union Commission 2025-2028, which has been initiated following comprehensive stakeholder engagement process across government. Kenya's candidature is informed by our leading role in enhancing and sustaining the Pan-African agenda in terms of independence and sovereignty, peace and security, development and prosperity, as well as sustainability and climate action. We hope to work with all as we try to achieve Africa's 2063 agenda. On our part, I have assured His Excellency that Kenya will support the Republic of Ghana for the candidature of Honorable Shali Bochi, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration for the position of Secretary General of the Commonwealth for the period 2024-2029. Excellency, this presents an opportunity for Kenya and Ghana to collaborate. I take this opportunity.